All right, folks, this is uh, Monday, April 3rd, 2023, and it's time for my portfolio review for the month. So through uh, March 31st, 2023, uh, the, the portfolio is doing really well. It is up 5.75% uh, for the year. This compares to the S&P 500, which is up 7.46%. If uh, I didn't have my little screw up with the... Uh, options writing and all of that, uh, the performance would have been even higher. I think that in the allocation that I use specifically for my million dollar portfolio, which is just one part of my portfolio, um, if you were to look at that in Portfolio Visualizer, it's up some 13.4% year to date, which is pretty crazy. Uh, you know, if I did that throughout all of my accounts, uh, I would be uh, happy as a clam right now. But uh, you know what? For the first quarter, I'm going to take 5.75%. Uh, that's nothing to sneeze at in the type of portfolio that I'm, I'm trying to run, where I'm trying to manage preserving my money. So uh, that's how it's done. So uh, more than happy, especially when you compare to what happened in 2022. In terms of the portfolio allocation, uh, it's pretty much where I wanted it to be in terms of the target. Uh, there are some small differences between uh, the cash that I'm holding versus equities and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, it's uh, right in line with the target allocation. Uh, just to remind you, our target allocation has me at 60% in equities, about 20% in long-term bonds, and uh, the rest evenly split between gold and REIT. Uh, so not too far off at all. Uh, in terms of my thoughts on what's going on in the market, I think that uh, you know, with the, the March rate increase of 25 basis point, that was what I was expecting. And I think that was what many people were expecting. You always had a few you know, vocal voices out there that are saying, oh, they're going to stop their rate increases or they're going to even uh, reduce their rate increases. And I think, you know, this is just clear indication that uh, people don't know what the hell they're talking about, frankly, right? All of this was in response to the failures of SVB Bank, Signature Bank, and uh, one more. I forgot what the third one was. But, uh, you know, this was in, in relations to the failure of those regional banks that had certain exposures that others didn't. And there was uh, panic and, you know, the sky is falling and people are saying, well, the banking system has a huge crisis and the Fed will have to recalibrate and do whatever. Um, this is a lesson. They didn't know what the heck they were talking about, right? They don't know. And that is really the key. Uh, I follow what the Fed say and take them at, at, their, you know, at their face value. So if they say that they're on a mission to aggressively raise rates to reduce inflation, then I have no reason to believe that they won't do that until they change you know, their message. And yes, they can change their message because they are reacting to data that comes in. So it's not like it's static. But my point in all of this is that, one, many of the commentators on the market don't know what they're talking about. It's their opinion. They can believe it and they can act on it if they want, but you should ignore it. Two, when the Fed says they'll do something, they're going to do it. And you should, you should believe them and, and ignore the noise that's out there. And, and lastly, this banking crisis that people think is a crisis, it's problematic and it may cause you know, more people to distrust the system and maybe cause other banks to uh, have a run and, and become insolvent. That could very well be. But if you take a step back and you say, would that apply to the entire banking system of the U.S.? I think the clear answer is, is no, it, it wouldn't. And given that, yes, there may be small pockets of panic here and there, but if it's a small pocket of panic, is that enough to uh, reverse the Fed's course on strongly fighting inflation? I don't think so. And I think that they are on this strong course because they realize that they screwed up in 2022. Uh, it's one thing to call it transitory, which I think at the time it was. The problem for the Fed was that they stuck with that label way too long. 
when they were seeing uh, data to the contrary. So they should have made a move you know, to raise rates sooner, and then perhaps they wouldn't have needed to uh, make such drastic increases uh, you know, in a short period of time. But they let it get away from them, so now they're trying to correct it. Because I truly think that when you look at all the problems that are facing us, a recession is not necessarily a bad thing when you compare it to runaway inflation. So if I were to just list all the problems that are potentially happening out there, you could have really high persistent inflation for a long time. That's one problem. You could have a recession, whether mild or severe. You could have a jump in unemployment, you know, by three, four percent, right, to cool down the labor market. You can have all of that, and you have to say, well, what's worse? They're all bad, right? But uh, to me, if I were giving some of those scenarios, I would rather take a recession uh, versus persistent high inflation any day of the week. Because a recession will cure the inflation. But if you have high inflation that sticks around for a long time, that brings much bigger problems. The same thing with uh, an uptick in unemployment. You know, there were a lot of headlines about Senator Elizabeth Warren grilling Jerome Powell about, don't you care about the two million, you know, lost jobs if you keep increasing rates? I think the answer is no, you don't care. Because if you look at the alternative, it's going to be a lot more than two million lost jobs if you let things get out of hand, right? Would I want to have two million lost jobs? No, obviously not. And I think that if you're in one of those two million positions, you would be severely impacted on a personal level. But if you take a step back and look at the forest instead of the trees, you know, fighting inflation should be the main concern of the Fed. And that's what they're doing. And I happen to agree with them. I mean, they screwed up last year, like I said, but they're trying to make up for it now. And uh, that's why you see them do what they do. So they only raised rates by 25 basis point in March. At their next meeting, you know, there's uh, a lot of guesses on what they're going to do. I think, you know, without having more data, and I may speak to this when I do my next update, is that without having more data, I think they're going to perhaps take a breather. Not raise rates, but certainly not lower it. I don't see we're going to see anything to the downside for the next 12 months, right? The reason that I think that they may be uh, sitting on rates instead of raising it is that they are getting close to their terminal targeted rate of you know, whatever they, they published lately. I think it was close to 5.5%. So we're almost there. So there's room for them between now and the end of the year to just sit and wait, see how it affects the economy, and uh, make a decision on whether or not uh, more action is warranted, right? When they raise rates, it's not like flipping a switch and things are going to immediately change. So they have to wait and see and react to data that comes in. If the, rates, the rate raises that they've done so far has the desired effect on inflation, on the employment market, and all of that, then sure, they may consider just stopping and letting it play out. But I don't think it's time for them to reduce rates yet. Uh, in any case, that's the update for my personal portfolio for the month of March uh, 2023. I am looking forward to the rest of the year. I think now that we have a quarter behind us, uh, things are looking decidedly better compared to 2022. Doesn't mean it's rosy by any means, but it's certainly better than last year, and I'll take it. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you're well. Take care.